Greetings everyone! Welcome in this new episode of Into the Motherhood. I'm very glad to see you here again. Today we will see the first of the three core exercises that I like to propose to people who want to learn the motherhood. I will also introduce to you the writing system that I will use to make your reading and understanding of the different practice a little bit more easy and efficient. Let's get started! Before getting into any explanation, I will show you what this first exercise consists of and then we will go through it step by step. One purpose of this exercise is to help you feel the angle that you will need to play either the lower string alone, the higher string alone or the two strings together. Also another one will be to help you feel the wrist movement that you will need to get more smoothness and more feeling while you play. And finally it will help you feel the length of the bow and also how to play it fully either if you are close to the frog or close to the extremity. To facilitate your learning, I will put in the upper part of the video a timeline with some indication. I will put which string to play as well as with which finger and the bow direction. For the fingers, I will talk about it in the next episode. I will use a L to indicate the lower string and H to indicate the higher string. For more commodity, I will use the modern score notation to give you the bow direction as some of you might already know it. For those who don't know already, the down bow or pull is indicated with kind of like a rectangle symbol which represents the frog and means that we start from the frog toward the tip of the bow, like that. Then for the up bow or push, it's indicated with a V mark and kind of represents the tip of the bow and means that we start from the tip toward the frog, like that. Know that it's only giving you the direction, nothing about the division of the bow. And by default, to start an exercise or a melody, we usually start with a down bow or pull, which means that we start from the frog toward the tip, like that. Now to finish with this brief explanation, know that I will usually give you the most common bowing used for the melodies, but once you get comfortable, feel free to explore and change for something that might be more suitable for you. The most important thing is the sound. And know that the bowing is not carved in stone. You can consider that the bow is for you, metal player, what the breath would be for a singer. Now we can start with the exercise. We will begin with only the lower string and we will break it down 
in four different movements so you can really get the idea and understand what is going on with the wrist, the shoulder and the bow position. So for the bow, it should be parallel to the top line of the body of the murderer and between the lower bridge and this line, like this. You can play in front of a mirror to help you see where the bow is going while you are playing. The first movement will be we put the bow gently close to the frog on the string and then we start to pull. Avoid pitching the frog of the bow between your thumb and index as it will create tension and lock your wrist. So the wrist should be very relaxed. Once we almost reach the tip of the bow, we can stop. Take a breath, relax the body, see how the shoulder are and everything. Then we can switch the wrist position like that. Then we go back and we push. Still very slow. Always relaxed. Still not pinching between the index and the thumb. Use only the fingers that are on the air. Then, once we almost uh, touch the body with the hand, you can stop a little bit before, we stop again, then relax, take a breath, and change the wrist position again. So that's the full movement of this exercise. First, we pull. Then we mark a break, second, we change the wrist position, then we push, and then we stop and change the wrist again. So the common mistake that is being made by new player is actually to pinch a lot the, the bow of the instrument and then compensate the lock of the wrist with the elbow and the shoulder, like that. You can see that this is not uh, comfortable and it, it looks definitely super weird. So you can play in front of a mirror to be sure uh, that you're really using the wrist and not making this like elbow shoulder mistake. Now that you get the idea, we can go through this full exercise once in a broken down way together. So we'll start with the lower string. Then we pull, relaxed, slowly, smile, then stop, change the wrist, then we go back, relaxed, slowly, then a little break, we change the string, then we go. Then a little break, change the wrist, then we push. Always relaxed. Then stop, double string now. Little break, change the wrist, then we push. So now that you saw this full exercise once in a broken down way, we can go through it all connected with a metronome. I did set the BPM at 30. So let's do it two times with the metronome together. Mm-hmm.
this exercise will definitely help you get one with your bow, especially feeling its length and the amount of pressure that you need to put on the hair to always get the best sound, whatever the part of the bow you are using. I would really suggest you to start with the breakdown version, uh, especially if you're not too familiar with the bowed instrument, to avoid having too much stress and lock on the wrist or on the shoulder. Also, know that you can use the navigation part that is in the description to replay the different exercise that we saw in this video so we can play it together. I think that's it for today's episode. I hope that it was interesting and that you are as motivated as me to move forward. If you want to help the show keep going, you can make a donation or subscribe on my website. And if you have more specific questions or you want just to chat with me, you can join the Discord community. The link is in the description. And until next time, may the blessing of the eternal blue sky be upon you. <laughs>